Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Uh, I will continue talking about certain theorems related to similarity. Um, and uh, basically they are, well, some of them actually, just a little bit more difficult, but a couple of really simple ones. Um, uh, I would like actually to encourage you to try to solve all these problems and prove all these theorems just by yourself and then listen to this lecture. Um, the notes contains all these theorems and uh, please uh, try to do it every time actually with all the problems and all the theorems. Try to do it yourself first. Then listen to whatever the lectures are and then try to do it again just to make sure that you remember everything. In any case, uh, all the material is on unizorn.com website. Please re refer to the notes to this lecture uh, with the, all the conditions, all the theorems. And there are actual hints uh, in the notes which might help you to basically do it yourself. All right, without further ado, let me just go straight to these theorems. Given two circles, radiuses R1 and R2, with centers Q1 and Q2 externally tangential to each other. So, this is one circle. This is another circle. Q1, Q2. Radiuses R1 and R2. All right. Straight line tangential to both of these circles at points M and N. Such that circles are on one side of the line. Proof that half of the segment MN is a mean proportional between radiuses of these circles. Basically, we have to prove that half of Mn is mean proportional between the radiuses. That's what it means. Half of this is square root, basically, of the product of radiuses. Okay, how can it be proven? Um, all right, let's draw another tangent here. Let's call it X. I would like to consider triangle Q1, X, Q2. Think about this. For obvious reasons, from X you have two tangents, which makes triangles MX, Q1, and well, let's put this point T. And um, X, T, Q, 1, basically are uh, congruent to each other, which means these angles are congruent as well. Now, why? Well, for obvious reasons, because these are uh, right triangles, common hypotenuse, and the same radius is on both sides. So we have a hypotenuse and the casualty, the same thing. So triangles are equal, so angles are equal. Same thing on this side. If I will connect this to this, I will also have uh, these two angles equal to each other, which means that the angle Q1 X Q2 is actually half of the 180 degrees angle MXM, because this is the same as this, this is the same as this, so sum of these two is exactly half of the whole thing, which means it's 90 degrees, so it's a uh, right triangle. Q1, X, Q2 is right triangle. Okay, since it's a right triangle, we can um, use a theorem, um, I hope you remember that in the right triangle, like this, if you have a, an altitude, then altitude is mean proportional between pieces of the hypotenuse it cuts through. 
I'm talking about uh, um, uh, altitude from from the top of the from the vertex uh, of the right angle. Now this theorem was actually proven a couple of times before in one of my lectures, and uh, uh, I'll just use it now. In this particular case, x t, which is this particular altitude. E is exactly equal to xm and is exactly equal to xn. So xt is actually half of the mn. xt is half of mn. And using this theorem, I know that xt squared is equal to r1 squared time, uh, r1 times r2, because it's a, because this is mean proportional between these two, which basically proves our theorem. So what's the uh, uh, necessary thing. What, what's the lesson of this? Well, a couple of additional uh, constructions, like connecting Q1 and Q2 to this point X, which is the midpoint, is all that is required. And then all you have to do is just to see one of the theorems which has already been proven in the past, the theorem about this right triangle and its altitude. All right, next. I just want to mention one more time, and I know I mentioned it many, many times, that mathematics, especially these problems related to uh, some theorems proving and construction, they do develop your, your creativity, because you have to basically kind of invent something new which would help you to solve the problem. That's the creativity. All right. Next. Given two circles externally tangential to each other, same as before, basically. Uh, and the common tangent, which is going through this point. So these are all tangent to each other at one point. All right. Choose any point x and draw two seconds, any seconds, AB and CD. Uh, prove that these four points, A, B, C, and G, are lying on the same circle. Well, obviously we know that we can draw a circle around three points, which are not lying on the same line. But these are four lines, uh, four points. So that's not necessarily the truth for any four points. But these four points do have this property of lying on the same circle. Now, if you remember, and again I'm referring to one of the prior lectures, if you have uh, a convex quadrilateral inscribed into a circle, then the characteristic property of this inscribed into a circle uh, quadrilateral or quadrangle is that some of the opposite angles, this plus this, is equal to 180 degree, as well as this plus this. For obvious reasons, because every inscribed angle can be measured by half of the arc supporting it, and so the, cap, so the arc which supports this angle is this one, and the arc which supports this angle is this angle, this arc. So some of these arcs is 360 degrees, and that's why some of these angles is half of this, which is 180. And this is a characteristic property, which means if a quadrangle uh, has the property of uh, some of the opposite um, angles equal to 180, then it can be inscribed into a circle. And if it can be inscribed into a circle, then it has this property. So I'm referring to this, and now I'm using this particular property, which I have already proven before, to prove that this quadrangle has this property of having opposite angles, which means this, plus this, equal to 180 degrees. All right, how can we do it? 
let's think about two triangles, XAC, the small one, and XBD, the bigger one. They are actually similar to each other. I'm going to prove it right now. Um, now, if I do, if I prove that this is the right, I'm just analyzing, then the corresponding angles will be to this, will be this, and to uh, this angle would be this. Now, now let's think about it. If these two angles are the same, because triangles are um, similar, and this angle plus this obviously uh, are equal to 180 degrees, that means that this plus this uh, uh, combined together will give me 180 degrees. Similar to the same, if these two angles, XBD and XCA, are equal to each other, these two in sum gives 180. That means these two in sum equal to 180. So, sum of the opposite angles is 180 degrees, which means I can inscribe this quadrangle uh, into a circle. So, all I have to do is similarity of these two triangles, AXC and BXD. Now, how can I prove that? Let's think about it. They do have a common angle, right? So, if two triangles have a common angle, what do I have to prove to prove these, th their similarity? Well, the proportionality of the sides which form this angle, right? So, these sides, this to, F, to, to this, should be equal to this to that. Okay, how can I prove that? Now, let's recall another theorem. Another theorem is that if I have a tangent and a second, then xA times xB is equal to xG squared. So the square of the tangent from a point is equal to a product of the whole second by its external piece. Again, this is the theorem which I have already proven in one of the prior lectures. Now, I will use it here right now. Let's call this point T. For this purpose, x T is a tangent, XB is a second, which means XA times XB equals XT squared. Now, from the same X, the same tangent, and let's consider this tangent uh, of this uh, circle, I would have XC times XG is equal to XT squared. Correct? Well, obviously they are equal to each other, so XA times XB is equal to Xc times Xd, from which we conclude that Xa divided by Xd is equal to Xc divided by Xb. And that is exactly the proportionality of the sides which we wanted to, which we wanted to prove. That's it. From proportionality, we infer the similarity, and with similarity, we infer that the opposite angles are summed up to 180 degrees. Now, next. Uh -huh. Next is an inverse one. Okay, if I have two circles, tangential to each other and have another uh, circle which intersects these then these points of intersection between 
seconds from these intersect points with the common tangent, they are all intersecting in the same point. OK, how can I prove that? So now, again, I have four points, A, B, C, and D. But now it's given that they are on the same circle. Now I have to prove that seconds A, B, and C, D continue to intersect in with the tangent will intersect at the same point. Well, but let's do it uh, this way. First, we will draw A, B and get the point X. Now, what I will do, I will connect that point X with point C and continue. My question is, Will it hit the point D? Well, obviously yes, because consider this. I know that the point which intersects, uh, the farther point of intersection of this second, lies on the same circle with A, B, and C. Because I will put it D prime. I know that. A, B, C, and D prime lie on the same circle. That's from the previous theory, which I have just proven. Now, so point D, D prime, is supposed to belong to a circle which is intersecting at points A and B and C. But there is only one circle which you can draw around three points, A, B, and C. And it's already given, which means that the point D prime should really coincide with the point D. There is no other way. Because it's the same circle, and the D prime is actually intersection of the same circle with the same circle, and it's only this one. That's easy. By the way, I use the fact that I can draw only one line through two points. Point A and C, I draw the line. What if I can draw another line through these two points, which will go to point D and not D prime? No, that's impossible. If you remember from the one of the postulates, uh, you have only one line which can be drawn through two points. Okay, next problem. Uh, given two circles with centers P and Q. Consider points A and B. Uh -huh, I know. Two points on circles P and Q. And what's the name of these points? Okay, it's A and B. Okay, so we choose A and B in such a way that PA is parallel to QB. And now we connect these two points to get x. So the theorem is that regardless of how we choose these two radiuses, as long as they are parallel to each other, the line which connects the ends of this will hit the center line at exactly the same point regardless of the position of the circle. So if I will have some other, let's say here, and parallel to this, I will hit exactly the same point. OK, how can it be proven? Well, let's think about it. Um, well, it's obvious that these two triangles, APX and BQX, are similar to each other. These are parallel, which means these angles are the same. And this is the common angle. So we have two angles congruent to each other. So 
triangles are uh, congruent. Which means, uh, I mean, sorry, not congruent, uh, single. Which means that the sides are proportional. All right, let's put the equation um, x cube from this small triangle across this angle relates to xp as in the small triangle across this angle is the radius. Let's say this is radius r1 and this is radius r2. So it's r2 to r1. So x cube over xp is a fixed ratio. That's what I don't care about r1 or 2, but since our circles are given, this ratio is fixed. Now, what's also fixed is pq. And instead of xp, I can write xq plus qp. xq plus qp. So this E is constant. Now, for convenience purpose, if this is constant, it's more convenient for me to reverse it. It would be xq plus x, sorry, plus xp over xq. This is also constant. But if I will divide this, it's 1 plus xp over x cube. Uh, I'm sorry. Not x. Uh, qp. Sorry. I made a mistake. Uh, so it's qp. over x cubed. Okay. Now, this is also constant, regardless of the position of a and b, right? So this is 1, this is constant, this is x cubed, which we don't know, and this is constant. So basically, it's like an equation, if you wish. Um, 1 plus, uh, let's say, qp is a, over unknown x q, which is x, is equal to b. I mean, obviously, this is an equation which has only one solution. Uh, x over a is equal to b minus 1. Oh, sorry. 1 over uh, b minus 1. So x is equal to a divided by b minus 1. So if b is not equal to 1, Now, b cannot be equal to 1 because um, it's basically the length of this piece. So if uh, b is not equal to 1, there is one and only one solution to this equation. So this particular uh, uh, x cube, this is x cube, this is x. So this length is constant. It's related to some kind of an equation from known variables. The variable a, which is qp, which is this, and the variable b, which is this ratio, which is basically this ratio. So everything seems to be working uh, in case this b not equal to 1. Now b is equal to 1 only when the radiuses are equal to each other, but if they are equal to each other, then the line ax would be parallel, and it will not uh, intersect the this line. You see, if two circles are the same, and you have these two radiuses, it will be parallel, and there is no intersection. So if there is an intersection, radiuses are different. So basically, the um, this equation has only one solution which is a fixed length. So x cube, which is x in my equation, is fixed, which means x position is also fixed. It's very noisy outside today. 
hope it doesn't disturb your train of thoughts. It does actually disturb mine a little bit. Next. Given two concentric circles, choose point X on one of them and diameter MN on another. Prove that sum of squares of segment XM and XM, XM squared plus XN squared is constant. Regardless of the position of the point X. Okay, here is how we can do it. This is the center. Let me turn the whole picture by 180 degree uh, around the center. Now, X will be turning into Y, let's say. Now, XM will be YN, because point M will be transformed into N, and N into M. So, XM will be transformed into YN, and XN will be transformed into MY. And for obvious reasons, this is parallelogram. Now, um, well, why is it parallelogram? Well, because I'm turning the segment, XM, let's say, by 180 degrees, which means it turns into a parallel to itself. Okay. Now, since this is a parallelogram, I can recall a theorem, and again, this theorem was proven when I was talking about parallelograms, that sum of squares of the sides of the parallelogram is equal to sum of the squares of the diagonals. Now, but what is the sum of the squares of all the sides? Well, that's xm squared plus xn squared plus yn squared, which is the same as this one, plus m y squared, which is the same as this one. So basically, it's two times this sum. And sum of the squares of uh, diagonals is basically uh, one diameter square times another diameter square, right? So it's g1 squared plus g2 squared, g2 and g1, which is constant, obviously, because the circles are given to us. So all I have to do is basically think about, OK, how to convert this into something more familiar, and how is turn the whole thing by 180 degrees and consider parallelogram and recall this property of the parallelograms. Well, that's why actually I'm asking you to, after you finish your own self-study and listening to the lecture, go again through all these problems or theorems which I have proven during the lecture just by yourself. So it will kind of inculcate into your mind. All right. Proving theorems and solving problems is basically like finding your way from point A to point E if you don't know the way. So it's very, very useful in real life. I mean, if you know how to, to, to get from here to there and nobody actually told you how, well, math helps. All right, one more problem I think I have, yes. Given a circle, its diameter AB and point C on the continuation of this diameter outside. This is C, this is AB. Um, and then we draw a perpendicular here. Take point M and connect this. This is A prime. Prove that AM times AA prime is constant independent of the position of the point M. <coughs> All right. Uh, basically, you understand that if M goes up, then AM would be lengthening, but AA prime would be shrinking. So the product is actually the same. OK, how can I prove it? Well, obviously, I mean, here, I think it just, 
uh, drawing this particular segment, this chord, just you know, asks to be, to, to be drawn. And now we have two triangles. Obviously, this is the right triangle because it's perpendicular by construction. This is the right triangle because this is an inscribed angle which is supported by half a circle. AB is a diameter, remember that, right? So both are right triangles. They share one particular acute angle, so they are similar. Okay, let's just write the similarity equation. Okay. Um, the... Uh, The bigger catheters from the smaller triangle, which is A, A prime, which is across this angle, relates to the catheters of the bigger triangle across the same angle, which is A, C, as uh, hypotenuse of the smaller, which is A, B, relates to hypotenuse of the bigger, which is AM. From which we conclude the AA prime times AM is equal to AB times AC. AB and AC, this is constant, which means that this is constant as well. End of proof. All right. Um, thanks very much for listening to me. Uh, don't forget what I said before. Go through all these problems, use the notes, uh, which are on this website for this lecture, and uh, there are some hints, which is making your life much easier, and try to prove it again just by yourself. Um, parents are encouraged very much to take charge controlling the educational environment of their students by enrolling them and asking them to take exams. All exams are available on the website for registered students. That's it, thank you very much.